first of all, to have Beethoven's Eroica Symphony opening the season as the centerpiece of this program, I mean, you can't think of a more appropriate, a more magnificent, majestic piece of music. It's, it literally revolutionized Western music when Beethoven composed this piece. Having a piece of this magnitude, of, of this breadth in the symphonic literature, I mean, this was unheard of. The Eroica Symphony turned Western music on its ear uh, in a number of ways. First of all, just the size of the thing. I mean, there had never been a symphonic work by Haydn, Mozart, or any other composer that came close to approaching the length of the Eroica Symphony, but also the demands on the orchestra. It's, it's a piece that requires the highest degree of instrumental virtuosity from every single member of the orchestra. Uh, that was something that, that, that no composer had had the audacity to, uh, to try until Beethoven in the early 19th century. The journey that Beethoven takes us on throughout the Eroica Symphony introduced listeners to a new capacity for music to express and to mean. So it's, it's one of these pieces that listeners have, continued to, have continually come back to and continue to rediscover for, for over two centuries now because it, even 200 years later, it continues to have the same uh, magnetism to it and the same visceral pull to, to what Beethoven was trying to express. I think it was probably the first time that someone so strongly and blatantly wrote his own feelings and frustrations in a piece. Of course, you know, if, when we look back, music had no emotional load uh, before Monteverdi, but even there it was sort of, you know, because of the, the non vibrato, the instrumentation, and then slowly music became more personal, more and more personal. Mozart is then, then you know, but I think Bach is, is already also extremely personal, but it's not, it's still very contained into form and um, how you behaved and then slowly in Beethoven it bursts out. famous story of the genesis of this piece is that Beethoven, um, Beethoven was fascinated by Napoleon Bonaparte and had high hopes for a new era of enlightenment for Western Europe that he thought Napoleon was going to usher in. And so the Eroica Symphony originally was meant to reflect, it was meant to capture Beethoven's feelings of hope, of grand optimism that he had invested in, in Napoleon. When he received word that Napoleon crowned himself emperor, Beethoven was disgusted, outraged, um, and was just, just profoundly disappointed. Uh, he had had such high hopes for who Napoleon might be, and then it turned out, in, in Beethoven's words, he's, he's a scoundrel just, just like the rest of them. So, um, so he angrily scratched out the original dedication that he had penciled into his manuscript. You know, it was going to be called the Bonaparte Symphony. Um, and even though that part of it was withdrawn, that element of the narrative was withdrawn, it still nevertheless has this um, heroic scope to the piece. Um, and indeed, we know it now as the Eroica Symphony. Beethoven gave the piece to his publisher saying, uh, this, is a, this is music that captures the spirit of heroism. And of course, the funeral march is, is uh, you can, it is said it was for, for Napoleon. I don't know whether that's true. Maybe it was for a love that he couldn't find. I mean, it was for every, that, I don't think he thought that sort of in the box. It was about everything, everything, you know, the, you say goodbye to so many things in your life from early childhood on, whether it's a pet or, you know, another school or a parent. And, uh, and, and so that requiem, basically that funeral march is, is for all that that you say goodbye to. We're excited to have a conductor of Edo's caliber leading this opening night program. It's, it's like talking mathematics with Einstein. You know, um, who am I to, <laughs> and who are, are, is any of us to, to feel that we have uh, caught the, the, the size of the genius that, that this man had. And, and of course he was a, a, maybe not a perfect genius. They always uh, give this example uh, or that 
was told to me when I was young and said, look at the score, a, a, a facsimile of Mozart. Clean, beautiful, F occasionally a little scratch and a little thing. Look at Beethoven, it's like <laughs> boom, 10, 15 pages for the same thing, trying to work it out. I mean, that man was, and then to think that I would be able to just look at it and do it, what took him, uh, you know, a hundred times to, thank God most conductors are born with a, with a healthy ego and otherwise you wouldn't survive, you know, uh, both in the, in the struggle to, uh, to convince yourself that you are in the right way with the score and with the musicians. Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic, fantastic piece. I could do it every month <laughs> or week. <laughs> I mean, it's just, and maybe then I would finally, no, I, I don't want to say ever in my life I, I have unlocked this, because then it's not interesting anymore. <laughs> Everybody who hears this piece hears it for the first time at, one, at some point. And so, so, so that experience of discovering the Eurotica Symphony, of not knowing what it is and then having it uh, presented to you. I mean, that, that's a timeless experience. Mm -hmm.